Yeah, buddy, well, if you don't like it, you can get out. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, hey, come on in, come on in, sir, sir. How you doing? I'm Hunter Deerman. See anything you like? What can I help you with today? Oh, hi, yeah. Uh, look, I'm not from around here. I'm just kind of visiting the living world, and I uh, was on my way back home, and I figured I'd stop here because... It seems that lately I've been fighting against people that like to use guns, and I'm getting kind of tired of getting shot all the goddamn time, so... Can you, uh, give me one so I could fight back at least? I know just the thing you're talking about, sir. Home defense is one of the prime reasons the Second Amendment is by far the greatest thing this country ever cooked up. I got just the thing for you here, right here, sir. This is, uh, this beauty right here should be able to protect yourself against any home invaders of any sort of type. All you gotta do is- Oh, no, 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 I think you're misunderstanding. See, this isn't just for personal protection, see. I'm trying to protect my entire society, I guess you could call it, from invaders, and well... Oh, okay, sir, I, I know what you're talking about. Forgive me, forgive me. That's an awesome eye patch, by the way. Oh, well, I don't always wear it, but thanks for the compliment. Illegal immigrants, so let me tell you, I got the thing right for you here. This will stop them right in their tracks. All you gotta do is... No, no, you don't... Okay, they're Nazis, all right? I, I didn't want to just come out and say it, but yeah, we're basically fighting against the Nazis. Oh, okay, okay. You know what, sir? I wasn't sure about you at first with the flashy way you dress. I thought you were one of those, those city folk. But let me tell you something. Now that I get to know you, I think you are a true American. Um, if it'll help me get a gun faster, then yeah, sure, I'm American. Damn straight. Got something right here for you. This is the best gun in my shop. This right here is a phase plasma rifle. Takes down a liberal from up to 600 yards. No, I said we were fighting against the Nazis. Yeah, I heard you, liberals. So if you just pay attention right here, you can insert the plasma bullet right in this slot. Yeah, yeah, okay, look, you're obviously insane. You just give me that Uzi in that glass container there and I'll be on my way. Really? You wanna? Okay, well, I guess that's fine, but it just seems like a damn waste. Damn waste. All right, I'll go bag that for you. You want a bottle of Jack Daniels with that? Buddy Teching here, hit review Bleach chapter number 644, titled Baby Hold Your Hand 7. And as a lot of us figured, because Nemu's name, Nemuri Nanago, denotes number 7, most of us figured that this fight was going to keep going until, you know, Baby Hold Your Hand number 7. And it has. This is the end of the fight. Okay, we can all stop complaining about it. I enjoyed the fight. Do I think it went on a little bit too long? Yeah, you could probably have cut out like one or two chapters out of it, but I enjoyed the fight. I really did. Okay, well, let's let's continue. Baby Hold Your Fan 7, never ending my dream. So chapter continues off where we have Pernita suffering from the effects of, uh, I, I guess we'll call it mega cancer. I don't know, because that's pretty much what it is, where the cells constantly divide without any control until the uh, death of the host. So we have like the little splotches of Pernita, like the little cubes of jelly after it exploded, hit the ground, and then the cubes of jelly begin to expand and explode constantly in just a series of successive explosions. Um, actually, this would look a little bit more cooler because we have Mayori walking away like as all these explosions are going on behind him. But you actually have to sit back and think to yourself, those are not like fiery explosions. That's like, that's like explosive balls of goo exploding all around Mayori. So, not as epic when you think of it like that, but whatever. Yeah, Mayori realizes, yeah, fuck it, I'm awesome. And he starts walking away, and then he immediately falls flat on his face, which I have to admit was pretty damn funny. Of course you know, this means war. Ugh, you bastard. You might have defeated me, but Pernita Park Joss doesn't go out without a fight. This'll be my one last hand job. Ugh. And we're done with the fucking puns! Yes! Yes! Cone 
it's a glorious day indeed in Teching Land! <laughs> oh my god, I'm so happy! <laughs> oh god. Okay, so we we fight we start off this fight, right? And and it's the hand. It's a giant hand. So I'm like, "Okay, I'll make a pun out of this." And then little did I know that would set us down a long road. What was that? Okay, 637 the hand was revealed. So that's 8 9 40 41 40 1, 2, 3, 4. That's that's what like eight chapters. That's like eight weeks of material. And, uh, yeah, that's eight weeks of me constantly trying to figure out more puns to do. But we're finally done! We're good! I know, I'm excited too! Okay, so after face planting himself directly in the ground, Mayori notes that some of the nerves in the surrounding area were still alive, which resulted in, uh, Pernida having one last act of vengeance and taking out Mayori's legs. I have to question that because I'm assuming he's talking about the nerves that were on the ground. Weren't those numbed by his anesthetic or, you know, whatever, whatever. I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. Pernida's gone, uh, well, at least to what we, to what we know. I mean, the left arm of the Soul King, I would be remiss to say that it might not show up in some form later on, but for right now, now at the moment, Pernida's, uh, Pernida has been defeated, and it's Mayori's victory. So, Mayori's just kind of struggling to get back up, and he's complaining that, ah, I guess this puts me in the same boat as Zaraki. To which we then have Ikaku and Yumachika uh, appear before Mayori to offer their assistance. You know, now, I'm not gonna be the dick and gonna be like, you know, where the hell were they at this entire fight? Because some people, not a lot of messages, but I did get some messages, like, why doesn't Yumachika show up and use Ruryo Kujaku? Why doesn't Ikaku go Bankai? Okay, first off, Ikaku's Bankai would do dick to Pernida. Okay, all about Ikaku's Bankai, it's not even as strong as it once was, but even if he did go Bankai, all his Bankai is is just a, a sheer mass of strength. Would he be able to, like, cut Pernida in half, like, a bunch of times? Yeah, probably, but it would just, we've seen what happens with Nemu, so, like, his Bankai would do nothing against him. Ruryu Kujaku, like, okay, it can zap abilities with, like, uh, it can zap someone's Riatsu, but I would imagine if he used Ruryu Kujaku on Pernida, if he managed to get a sneak attack, which that even that is kind of a long shot, considering it has eyes all over the freaking place, but even if he were able to do that, I would figure, like, the nerves could just travel down Ruryu Kujaku and then affect Yumachika, so I don't see any reason, they, they were right to run, and plus, they had to get Kenpachi to a safe location. That was, like, their main priority there. But anyway, they're here now to try to help them out, and Mayuri does praise them for at least not interfering in the fight. All right. Well, I'm dying, so listen carefully. Around 50 meters ahead of here, underneath the rubble to your right, you will find a bunch of conveniently placed healing pods. Do you have to say it like that? What? All I said was healing pods? I'll lay off of Mikaku. He's a mad scientist. He can't control the way he says pods. Oh, great. Now you're doing it. So sure enough, they go to that location, and I'm assuming this is uh, one of those things where we have to just retcon in the sense that, yeah, Nemu brought those with her through the gate, even though we didn't see her bring her with those through the gate the first time they went through the gate. <coughs> okay, whatever. Anyway, there are these, uh, from what we can tell, there's four of them. There might be more, but they're like these, uh, these specialized reinforced healing pods that I guess once somebody goes inside, they're like completely protected from the outside area to the point where the entire effects of the battle with Pernida had no effect on these things. So they're damn, they're pretty sturdy. Um, all you have to do to open them is press a button. So I'm assuming maybe Mayori set it up so it has to be like a Shinigami to press the button because the whole point of having like a reinforced... I, I'm assuming the reason they brought these is like, okay, in case that any of us get wounded while we're in the Soul Palace, obviously we're not going to be able to just simply retreat back to the Soul Society really easily. So it would be nice to have a fallback, someplace that we can recuperate like a safe zone without worrying about the enemies attacking us. So maybe that's what he set it up as. Like it has to be a Shinigami to open. It. When, however, uh, Ikaku Yumichika, they dig out the pods, open it up, and Mayori states that on the inside, they should be as good as new. It took longer than I would like to reverse their zombification, and it's shortened their lifespans considerably, but they're back. And the pods open up, revealing Toshiro Hitsugaya and Rongiku Matsumoto, completely healed of their zombification. At the same time, in the back, you can see the two other pods behind them opening up. So I don't know if that's like Rose and Kensei and those ones, because Rose and Kensei, like, okay, Rongiku and Toshiro, that was debatable if they were killed before turning into zombies by Giselle. And then in this chapter, it was revealed that no, they did not actually die. They were just zombified while they were alive, and Mayori had to reverse that process. But with Rose and Kensei, it was confirmed by Isani that, yeah, they were dead before they got turned, so... I don't know what those other two pods are, or if, you know, they're they're in there, or they're just not done yet, because Mayori acts like there's only two free ones now, the ones that Toshiro and, and Rangiku came out of. So what, what are your theories on that? I want to know about that. Okay. Well, anyway, um... 
We don't really actually get much from Toshiro and Rongiku. We actually don't even get to see Rongiku say anything. Toshiro just steps out, and uh, he's still wearing his uh, his, his Sternritter uniform that I guess Giselle gave him. And I, I actually want to see him wearing that, because that's actually a pretty cool outfit. But, yeah, he just kind of walks out and then just thanks Mayori, and then just keeps on going to the battlefield. So after Toshio and Rangiku leave the pod, Mayori instructs Ikaku and Yumachika to place him inside one, as well as place Kenpachi inside of the other vacant one, and uh, that's where they're going to have to stay to, I guess, heal up. So after doing this, uh, Yumachika and Ikaku both bow before Mayori while he's in the pod about to be closed up, and he states that, thank you, Captain Kuratsuchi, for saving Captain Zaraki. I'm like, okay. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. We get a sense of, like, honor between them. That's pretty cool, considering the fact that you know, Mayori, I mean, he could have died. I mean, that was a close fight, all right? He won, all right? We can give him some praise now. And as the pod closed and Yumachika and Ikaku run away, uh, Mayori's just in the pod and he's clutching on Nemu's brain that's inside of his Shiokshō, and he's just like, at last, I've completed a, a Kompaku that can evolve of its own accord. And as the pod closes, right before he's about to go into, like, I guess, like, the healing coma or whatever it is, um, he thinks to himself, I've finally surpassed Urahara, or at least I finally stepped out of his shadow. And that that's the key here. It's like, this is his entire goal. It's like, it's, it's not easy. Okay, like, okay. There's always going to be somebody out there that does something better than you, no matter what you're really good at. There's always going to be someone out there that's going to be better. But think of it from Mayori's position. He's not just, like, worrying about a bunch of people that are better than him. There's only one person that's better than him. He's number two. And he's always been number two. And that's something that's probably always irks the fuck out of him, because he knows how smart he is, and he can do all this shit, but he's still always number two. And he has this one thing, this one aspect of his creation, which is Nemu, which is like, this is the one thing that I've done better than Uohara. And I am so proud of this, and I cannot wait to see the look on his face. So, the pod closes, and we get, like, a, I guess a representation of, of his dream. I don't know if it's like the pod gets, he like, like in DBZ, like it's filled with, like, healing goo. I, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so the pod gets activated, and he falls asleep, and then we see the title page in which we get to see a naked Nemu. Okay! Okay, well, whatever. We gotta have that. I gotta throw that in there. Yeah, it's not as um, it's not as uh, explicit as when we had naked Masaki back in chapter six thirty uh, five thirty five. But it's it. She's there. She's 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 naked. Yeah. Okay. Um, but now, I just want to just address something for everybody in case you weren't keeping score. So, we've now officially swapped out Mayori and Kempachi for Toshiro and Rongiku. <laughs> okay, 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 listen, listen. All right, as Bleach fans, we all know that a Kenpachi Zaraki fight is greater than a Toshiro Hitsugaya fight. I mean, that's just basic math right there. So a lot of you might be pissed by this. Um, that we're, we're, like, we didn't even really see Kenpachi do anything, and now he's already out of commission again, and now we just get Toshiro in exchange. I have to say, Toshiro, I don't like him as much as Kenpachi. I'm not even the hugest Kenpachi fan, but I really don't enjoy Toshiro that much, even though I know he's the most popular character. But I do, I do want to see him have a pretty awesome fight. Because I, I've just been going back and looking at, like, the history of this kid throughout, like, the major fights he's been in throughout the series. And the only fights he's ever legitimately won are the fight against Shaolong and the fight against Yukio. That's it. Like, every other serious fight he's been in, especially the fights that he's been training really hard, okay? It's like a, it's like a, like a curse with Toshiro. It's like, I'm gonna get stronger to defeat this person. He just gets outright destroyed. Not even a match, just outright destroyed. So, I'm just gonna, you know what? Let's have, like, let's have a little, uh, recap session. How about we do that? Here we go! Oh no, Aizen, you're the bad guy? And you almost killed Momo? I'm gonna kill you, you son of a bitch. Bon Kai! Okay, Aizen, last time was a fluke, but I've been training my ass off since then, and I'm ready to defeat you now. Here I come! All right, you Quincy bastards. I've been training for the past 17 months to fight on characters of Aizen's level. I've refined my Bankai into an ultimate icy death machine, so come and bring it! Oh, that's pretty cool Bankai, bro. I'll be taking that. Quincy Swagger! Okay, so... I might have gotten my Bankai stolen, but... <laughs> I've went back to the basics and I've honed my fighting technique to fight a little bit more clever and utilizing what little power I have. So come on, Quincy's round two. Let's do this. Oh, hey, what's going on? I'm Basby, bro. Uh, okay. So, uh, what do you do? Oh, I manipulate fire and, uh, I'm going to wreck your ass now. Oh, well, uh, I think we're a little bit mismatched. So do you mind if I just kind of leave and... Oh, hey, you don't look so good. Want me to help you? Uh... 
Yeah, so with that kind of luck on Toshiro's side, considering also the fact that the only one time he's ever been truly badass in this series was when he was a zombie under the control of Giselle, I kind of hope he gets at least one cool shining moment where he just finishes off the enemy and doesn't immediately f***ing die afterwards, okay? Can we have that? Sure. All right, moving on. But yeah, so that was the title page having Mayuri's, you know, inner monologue, although I don't know exactly what Kenpachi was thinking in his pod before he went to sleep, but it probably went something like, Oh, mother f This is bullsh**! How many times in this series have I been taken out of commission like this? Uh, let me think. Uh, none up until this arc where I got cratered for 20 chapters, and now I have to deal with this shit. Oh my god, Kubo, if you do not give me one cool ass fight with these Quincy motherfuckers, I swear I am going to you harder than eyes and the plot. So for the second half of the chapter, we cut over to where Shunsui and Uraharu's group are. They're the ones that are being targeted by uh, Lily Barrow's Sternrider X from a distance. And uh, Urahara brings up that, yeah, Mayori Kurtsuchi's Riatsu is kind of abated, but he states that, well, you know, he's Kim, he's Mayori, so he should be fine. And Shunsui's like, yeah, we got bigger issues to worry about now. So they kind of turn around and they say, okay, how many of us are left? So they are aware. They are aware that Lily Barrow is from a distance sniping all their members of their groups. And th they apparently haven't altered their core at all. They're apparently still just going in the same direction. The only people that are left, that they say that are left anyway, we have Uohara and Shunsui, obviously. Then we have Rukia and Renji. That's good. Nanao, Shinji, and that's it. Uh, according to them, all the other vice captains have been defeated. So I just... I want to know what happened, because this is a big gap here, okay? So, I can understand, okay, we took, we saw Shuhei get taken out. I can understand Isane, uh, Kione, um, Sentaro, uh, Moreccio. I can understand those guys get taken out. But what happened with Biakia and what happened with the Visors? All right, I can't imagine those guys got taken out that easily. And, you know, maybe, maybe Biakia went off to another location. That would make more sense, because he doesn't show up here at all. I don't know what the hell happened with him. But it's like, it's like, what are you guys doing? Like, you're walking in a straight line and you keep noticing that people behind you are getting sh uh, shot from a distance by Lile. Like, is there nothing you can do in this situation to avoid this? Because I can think of a few. Like, okay, number one, there's a shit ton of buildings around you. Maybe go in one of them. Um, another one, split up. I know it sounds like a stupid, you know, Scooby-Doo kind of shit, but honestly, if there's only one person sniping at you, if you split up, then Lile's obviously going to have to focus on somebody, and while he's focused on that somebody, somebody else has a possibility of finding Lily and taking him out. Um, option number three, Uohara. There's a thing called Bakudos. I mean, you're a master Aikido. You can't throw up some kind of wall to protect you guys. But, but no, it's just like they're just keep walking. Like, oh man, we keep walking straight and people keep getting shot. Oh no, coach just got shot. Keep running, guys. We have to keep going straight. There's no other options for us now. But yeah, I just I just want to know what's up with that, because it just doesn't make any logical sense to me. But it, it, anyway, I guess it was Kubo's method of thinning out the herd. It's like, oh man, look at all these people in Shunsui's group. Okay, we got to start cutting out people here. This ain't going to work. We need to even the score a little bit. So we cut over to Lile on top of whatever building he's standing off of as he's sniping. And uh, he's just having this nice little, you know, monologue to himself that all snipers have in movies because they're so cool and they're so awesome because they can kill people from a distance. Let me tell you, if you haven't heard this line before, it's terrible. Terrifying, isn't it? Yes, it must be, I suppose. Having no idea where I'm aiming from, as your opponent snipes you off from afar, watching as your comrades fall one by one. It's only natural to become overwhelmed with terror in a situation like that. Oh my god, how emo can you be? You know, you need to even go you need to go even further than that, Lily. I mean you're a Quincy, you have a cross on you, right? You should just be like, oh yes, I am the servant of the angel of death. My steady and in my eye aim for the death of those that fall before me. I can kill them from a mile radius away, before they even know their life has finished. The Grim Reaper will appear behind you and guide you across the river Styx. I mean, god damn it, man! Just Boom, 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 boom. Okay, we don't have to do the, the emo talk inside your head. Do all snipers do that? I want to know. I want to know. If you're in the military and you're a sniper and you're just sitting on top of a roof or something, I want to know if you actually do that shit. Like, you just, it's like, oh, 
man, I'm so awesome. I'm a sniper. I can kill people from a distance. I have to be all deep and philosophical, therefore. You know, Shinsui figures out a plan, though. He figures, like, okay, well, we keep getting shot at, so in order to discover Lily's location, somebody has to, like, jump out in front and then stop and, like, hey, guys, I'm, I'm a target right here. And uh, Lily's obviously going to take a shot, and using that as a tell, they can figure out where he is. I want to know why he didn't figure this out, like, when the first four people got shot, because you'd figure, like, as soon as Shuhei got shot, like, oh, shit, Shuhei just got shot. All right, so it's probably a sniper. Uh, maybe we can, you know, use somebody as a distraction. Now, he waits until, like, five people are gone before he actually does this maneuver. But, yeah, so Shinsui just kind of jumps out in front of everybody and just takes out his swords and just opens himself up to an attack, to which Lily, you know, complies with quite nicely. Shinji starts freaking out, and then we see a, uh, a little glimmer of light, I guess, wherever Lily is taking his shot at, and uh, Shunsui's like, oh, okay, I found your location. Ah! But before he could finish, he gets shot right in the chest uh, by Lily's sniper rifle. And he falls back, and there's blood coming out of his mouth, and then Lily just keeps going on about his, you know, oh, I've seen that look countless times. I expected Shinigami to have a higher standard. Oh, this fight, this fight better not be like this. I swear. I mean, despite all the crap we had to deal with per Nida, this fight with Lily better not be him just spouting off this emo shit the entire time, because I, I got enough of that from pre-time Skip Sasuke. I, I can't even say his name right. Pre-time Skip Sasuke. I do not need this from this guy. And come on, buddy. You're like the last black guy in this entire series you can i mean you're probably gonna die i mean let's be honest here but you can at least go out with a bang get it because you use it okay whatever let's just let's just move on to the final scene of the chapter so so lily just thinks that he killed uh shunsui quite easily but as of course we all know yeah that shit ain't happening so here's where we get a little bit of a translation snafu so uh while lily is uh, i guess lowering his rifle he hears uh this voice i guess from around him like all around him at once and it's like a uh a song or some kind of chant that uh shunsui is saying to him and he can't figure out where this is coming from in the manga stream translation it's uh, the nursery rhyme uh, rockabye baby you know like rockabye baby in the treetop when the bow breaks the cradle will fall and down will come baby cradle and oh and then we have shunsui appear behind lile in the uh japanese just like the straight up japanese it's uh daruma san ga koron Duh. I know Daruma is like a like a Japanese demon, so obviously probably not syncing up too well with the translation there. I think that was just like manga stream taking liberties just to change it over. Um, so uh, let me just finish up the chapter and then I'll tell you what happens, you know, after, you know, what I think Shunsui is doing here. So after appearing directly behind Lile Barrow, uh, Shunsui is now in his Shikai Katen Kyokatsu, and he takes a swipe directly at Lile's uh, barrel, which cuts it off and knocks it over. Hey, just kind of like the same thing that uh, Nimaya did, really. Uh, I wonder how he fixed that the first time. I question this because you might think, oh, it's just a Reishi weapon. He could just fix it. But remember BG-9's minigun? I mean, he couldn't just fix that, right? So I don't know what the difference is between those things or if they're Reishi weapons or if they're just like normal, if they're weapons that they get or make themselves. I don't know how this works. But anyway, yeah. So Shunsui just cuts the gun uh, gun's barrel off and he states that, ah, that's an impressive dodge. You're pretty quick. I've taken out your weapon. Next will be your life. So then we just get like the cool end of the chapter where we have Shunsui staring on against uh, Lily. Yeah, well you might have cut off my gun's barrel, but I still have a gun. You have nothing but swords. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, the thing about that is... Oh, shit. Well, uh, didn't see that coming. Yeah, nobody did. Anyway, uh, I should probably ask for your name before I kill you. Oh, well, uh, I'm Sternritter X. That's nice! Alright, so that's the end of the chapter. Uh, okay, so Shunsui's ability, what he's doing, or what game he's playing, because that's the ability of uh, Shunsui's Katen Kyokatsu. He makes children games a reality. Whoever wins, loses. I mean... Alright, so that's the end of the chapter. So, uh, what I think is going on here with uh, Shunsui's uh, weapon, and this is something that's been uh, sent to me a couple times. Uh, there's like a traditional Japanese game that is very, very similar to what he did here. Uh, and I'll just put a link to that below. You can watch that video. Uh, and see like the rules of the game and everything like that. But in like in English or like growing up in the United States, I would say it's most akin to a red light, green light. You know where you have to like turn your head and you know people are trying to call up behind you and you they can't move when you turn and look at them and they have to try to you know tag you or something like that. So maybe like that sort of game there. Um, 
And, I mean, it's pretty effective here because it was able to sneak up behind Lille, and that's probably the game he chose. Also, the whole idea of him getting shot, because we saw him get shot, and we saw blood coming out of his mouth. The thing about Shunsui Zanpak Toe, really, if you actually think of what, what its true ability is, not, we're not just talking about, like, like uh, Child's Game's reality. We're talking about, like, at its core, what it does is it can nullify, lessen, or amplify any form of damage. And this is true. We've seen this in his fight against Stark, where, you know, he did his, uh, his Eero Oni ability, the, uh, the color demon, where, you know, uh, he goes to cut Stark in his arm on his gray, on his gray arm, and even though he's not wearing any gray, so the attack is lessened. So even though Kemp, uh, uh, Shunsui's attack should have, like, cut off Stark's arm, it only causes, like, a little cut. And then later on, the attack is amplified whenever Stark attacks him from behind. It's just a little cut, but a lot of blood comes out. So that's really what the core of Katen Kyokatsu can do, and that's a pretty damn OP ability. So, yeah, once again, we have Shunsui fighting against a guy that uses guns. I... Sh K Kubo must just, like... I don't know. I don't know what it is. Kubo has to be aware of this at this point. He has to be aware of what he's doing. He fights against uh, Stark. He fights against Robert Akutron. That's how he loses an eye. I mean, and let's remember that. Let's remember that. Robert Akutron is the reason Shunsui lost that eye. That is like the most effective thing that Robert's ever done. But that is true. Okay, let's just remember that. So, next chapter, their fight's probably going to get set up. I'm assuming that Uohara and the other group, considering they're still far away, I think they might just kind of, like, leave Lile to Shunsui and then head off, you know, to another location or maybe go back and, like, see the wounded and shit like that. Um, I don't think they're going to join in on the fight. They really don't have to. Shunsui should be able to take out uh, a Stern Ritter and even an elite Stern Ritter, you know, at least on equal footing easily. Um, are we going to see his Bankai in this fight? Um, I would like to say yes, simply because there's really not a lot of opponents left. And if Shunsui does defeat Lile without using a Bankai, I really don't see any other opponents that he could use it on, unless he fights against Hashwolf, because that was kind of set up, that he was going to do that. Um, but I don't, I don't really know. I don't really see Shunsui getting, like, two major fights for the rest of the arc, you know? I, I think Hashwolf might be more of a, maybe Uryu fights against him or something. I don't see him, you know, taking on, um you know, Lile here, beating him without using Bonkai, and then taking on Hashwalt and defeating him with Bonkai. I don't see that happening. So, yeah, I would probably say we're going to get to see Shunsui's Bonkai in this fight, uh, but it's probably not going to be next chapter, or the chapter after that, or the chapter after that. It's probably going to be a while down the road, although I might be wrong. But anyway, yeah, that's chapter 644, guys. Thanks for watching. This will be Teching, signing out. Laters. Yeah, so, I'm, ba I'm about to do my skit, you know? My skit is Hunter Deerman, local gun shop owner and registered Republican, and I'm trying to find my guns. I can't find my guns. I have my shotgun, and I got my laser gun. I'm trying to find my pistol, because I'm going to do a bit. And I, I'm like, I'm like, where, where is my pistol at? And the only conclusion I came to is that the terrorist dung came and took my guns. Oh, no, no, better yet. No, the government, the government came and took my guns. That damn Obama must have snuck in here in the middle of the night and took my guns away from me. Let me tell you something right now. I'm going to raise an army of good God-fearing Christian Americans that love the Second Amendment, and I'm gonna march into Washington, and I'm gonna tit our guns back, god damn it!